filling it up and up right here. Okay, so thank you, Lord. Yeah, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. All right. More bubbles coming out. I feel like a bird has been left in. Okay. Praise God. Praise God. All right. So let's just keep believing for these guys. You can keep praying if you like. I'm going to ask Jamie to come and uh, make some announcements. Praise God. So keep getting healed while we make announcements, yeah. right? Amen. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so yesterday we had our first women's get together in a very long time. Yay! And it was nice. Yeah. It was yeah. nice. Yeah. You know, those who know me know I don't like those things, but I enjoyed it. So good job. Good job, ladies. Yeah. It was good. There was no whining and pitiful, <laughs> oh, I have to be a woman. Yeah, that's how I got you. Uh, so good job, guys. Oh, of course, yeah. The food was great. It was, just, it was great fun. All right, so men's meeting. Uh, they probably don't have as much fun as we do, but um, <laughs> they don't eat. So hey, but that's why we don't eat that often because we yes. eat our first. Men's meeting, ten thirty Saturday. So do that. Yay! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It's here at the church and um, over in the, one of those rooms that we call different things from different days because we keep expanding and we need more space and people keep yes. getting pushed out of their rooms, right? Um, <laughs> it's a good thing. Dwayne has lost his office once again because we're now needing it for an apartment. It's just, yeah. So um, what else is happening? Ball game, Tuesday night still? Yeah, this is the last one, isn't it? Is it six? Seven and eight. Yes. We like it at seven because it starts to get a little cooler. Y'all, this is your last chance. Here's the thing. Last last Tuesday was a really, really bad day for me. Did not have a good day. I got home. I just laid on bed and cried. And Andy's like, you're going to be all right. So probably not. And he's like, well, let's just not go to the game tonight. And you just rest. And I said, no, it's the only fun thing I got in my life. I'm going. I'm going. Well, except for Andy. He's fun. But we, you know what? It is so fun. It is so fun to just go and watch them run and play. And we sit and talk and sit under the shade tree. And it's great. It's a great connection. And I was so much better. And my day ended well instead of sitting there crying for the rest of the night, which is what was probably going to happen. So I decided not to. And so don't miss your last opportunity to watch these guys play ball. Woo! It's fun. Um, the Huck's Reading Shower, Wedding Shower, is Saturday at 2, at two o'clock at the Lake Club, Club Lake. I'll assume that it's there. 2 o'clock on Saturday. Um, thank you guys for turning out for Amanda and Logan. And let's do that again. All right? Let's bless, let's bless people. Do you know what? If you wonder why you're not blessed, are you blessing other people? Come on. Come on. It's just, it's just fun to bless people. Because then you just get blessed and you didn't even ask to. And it just happens. Yeah. Greater things happens in August. August 4th to the 7th. Oklahoma City. Even if you can't go. Yay. That is happening in our state. Yeah. It is a big, big deal. We're, we're so excited about it. So I think that's all. Oh, wait a second. Trying to get stuff off of Jamie's list. So, y'all raised $1,600 last week. Woo! Yeah. Eric came up, like these little miracles, like we're, we're taking every miracle we can get. Yeah. Eric came up yeah. Saturday or Sunday after the service and he says, Hey, if you go to Washington Valley Saw, they'll sell it to you for $100 a pallet. Amen. Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> we need 10 pallets back there. You do the math, and I think we're selling and ask me to do it. The extra money will literally pay for the water bill. Okay? Because I have to water a lot. And I can feel Big A's heart just doing this. Okay? So we have, you guys went way beyond. Yeah. Uh, and so grateful. So here's the next part of that. 
I'm aiming for Thursday, Friday to lay saw. Hey, check Facebook. If you don't have Facebook, it's safe. Okay? <laughs> Need to get saved. If you do have Facebook, you're probably going to need to get saved. Jesus, we'll, we'll put an announcement. We'll make a call. We need every able body. If you are not an able body, don't be that person. Don't be that person. Okay, I'm going to sit and watch and bark orders. Okay, we need we need people that can bend over, move saw, and not afraid to get bit by spiders. <laughs> you never laid saw. Guess what's going to happen? Okay, I'd like to say they're all Jesus anointed. Not going to bite you. They may need to get sick. We will put out a call Thursday, Friday. I still have not talked to Alan, so I'm trying not to move my spirit of manipulation to use his truck. <laughs> the big trailer moves up. <laughs> I need your help, brother. <laughs> Grow up the family yell. Anyway, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That took a pressure off of us that we didn't have to put anywhere else other than in the ground. Yeah. That is seed. That is your seed. That is your seed. That is your seed. You gave. You, you answered a call. So yep. thank you so yep. much. It was a big, big deal. And it didn't take from our computer money that we needed to spend on 10 new computers this week. So that's that's a big deal. And you just don't realize it's just constant. Thousands and thousands of dollars that have to happen here every day. And so thank you guys for that. For doing that solid part and getting those things and Alan who's snake killer, truck driver, whatever <laughs> has to happen, right? So that's the real kingdom, right? Yeah. So whatever happens. Alright, so I think that's it on my analysis. Amen. So let's take an offering. Amen. Let's stand and uh, the things that you've given and you've been giving make these declarations over it. Yes. This isn't just a tradition. Yeah. Right? This isn't, oh, this is the party service. We're going to say this on the checkout. No, you've been planting and giving. Make these declarations. These things are happening in people's lives. Yeah. So let's yeah. declare this together. Amen. As we receive today's yeah. offering, we are believing the Lord for jobs yeah. and better jobs, raises and bonuses, Benefits, sales, and commissions, favorable settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, debts paid off, expenses decrease, blessing and increase. Thank you, Lord, for meeting all of my financial needs, that I may have more than enough to give into the kingdom of God. And promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank God for His goodness. We have yet to include stimulus payments in that declaration. Or tax refunds. Or tax refunds. Hallelujah. But there are jobs and better jobs. Amen. Praise God. That's good. Thank you for your giving. At this time, we're going to dismiss kids to go to Children's Church and Nursery. And hallelujah. Happy birthday to Josh Knox. Happy anniversary to Marshall. The significant other is not here, but happy anniversary to Morgan. She's not here, is she? Okay. Okay. We won't shame her, but she's not here. Um, praise God. Life happens. Well, we're going to continue today. Did, uh, did you guys all go work on your love language this week? Yeah. Did you work on your partner's love language? Oh, we got quiet. I think so. I think so. <laughs> Right, because last week wasn't so much about you finding out your love language. It was you giving to your partner, yeah. your spouse, your children, right? And finding out and ministering to them. Yeah. And praise God, some of you aren't sure. Hallelujah. God's good. And then we want to continue this morning. And Jamie and I are going to tag team a little bit. Woo! On, uh, praise God. And we're going to... 
talk today about raising children of revival. Amen. As we talk about supernatural families. Amen. Now, I want to start off and I want to turn to Acts chapter 2. Very familiar passage of scripture. Uh, Acts chapter 2. The outpouring of the Spirit on the day of Pentecost. Pentecost. How many realize the outpouring of the Spirit is still happening today? Yes. yes. There was not a cutoff date. Right. right? It's still happening. Yeah. Right? And we make two, um, two assumptions. Well, we make an assumption that this was passed, but the outpouring of the Spirit is still happening. Yes. Right? Yes. We're still receiving what God is pouring out. And so we make ourselves available. Now, Peter's preaching, and he refers back to the Old Testament, and he says here out of the book of Joel in Acts 2, 17 and 18, and it shall be in the last days, God says, that I will pour forth of my spirit upon all mankind, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Amen. Your, old, your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, even upon my bond slaves, both men and women, I, sh I will in those days pour forth of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Amen. So we're supposed to live as families in the outpouring of the spirit. Yeah. Right? And sons, your sons and your daughters are called to prophesy. Yeah. Amen. Right? Really, the outpouring of the spirit, because, you know, the... The disciples and Jesus' followers, they were already commissioned to do signs, wonders, and miracles. They'd already been doing these things before the outpouring of the Spirit. Right? Now, I believe that the outpouring of the Spirit facilitates that because Jesus said, you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Right? Evidence of the Holy Spirit is not speaking in tongues. Just kicked over a Pentecostal cow right there. <laughs> now, praise God, I speak in tongues more than you all. I'm a big believer in it. This morning, I was speaking mysteries to the Lord, right? Shaka Bam, Shaka Baba, all those things. Untie my bow tie. I'm coming on a Honda, right? I was, you know, but the, the, the New Testament spirit is a prophetic spirit. And God wants to baptize families in the spirit, Amen. right? He wants to touch your sons and daughters so that they will prophesy, okay? There is no junior Holy Spirit, Ooh. right? There, there's no junior Holy Spirit. There's not a, a minor prophet, <laughs> right? There's, there's no, uh, in, sometimes people in the body of Christ, first of all, we don't want the Holy Spirit to move in us because it might be uncomfortable, um, and get us out of our, our comfort zone. Yeah. But when God starts moving in children, sometimes that makes us even more uncomfortable yeah. because they'll go with it. Yeah. If, if we let that happen, and we don't want just kids in the back doing a color sheet or playing video games. Right, if we get to that point where we're doing just, and I'm not saying coloring sheets are bad because there's just time and place for coloring sheets. But our goal is not just in here. We'll touch on this because church really isn't about you. It's not about you getting your worship need met. It's really about families coming into the presence of God together. And us training our kids to worship. Yeah. Right? That's what we're called to do. And, and that's not popular in current church culture right now. We want to drop our kids off at the door. When reality, God wants us worshiping together. And when we do a separation and some kids go back here, it's because we want to train kids to move in the things of the Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So we're gonna we're gonna touch on that. I'm just getting warmed up here. So you know, and, and let kids go. Every revival and awakening in history, children and young people were at the forefront of that. I mean, there were reports of in the great awake of the great awakening, the great awakenings, 
right? Which both happened when it looked like America and England weren't going to survive. You do realize that. When the Great Awakenings happened, it looked like America was over. Are we right for an awakening? I mean, we're right for an awakening because, you know, the church has really been praying, not just in the last year. I mean, I sent some of the intercessory team this this, um, clip, a two-minute clip from Dutch Sheets. I probably should post it in the group. You know, that basically Chuck Pierce told Dutch Sheets, he said, you're going to have everything you've been praying for. He said, I couldn't tell you that what you're wanting to happen by January wasn't going to happen by January. He said, but your prayers over the last month have saved the nation. And everything that you've asked for in this nation, even the exposure of evil in the government, yes. is coming. Yes. That's kind of scary. On no matter whether you're a Republican or a Democrat or an Independent, that's scary. Because... We want to say, Lord, whose side are you on? He's well, I'm really not on anybody's side. He's on his own side. He, yeah. he wants us to line up with what he's doing. Yes, yes. Right? So, oh, hallelujah, that's good. <laughs> but children have always been involved in the move of God. I mean, there are, tale, there are accounts of uh, in the what God was doing in Kentucky. And God's moving 222 years later. Right now, Joe Moody was just there. There are a lot of people going out ministering in Kentucky where that one of those outpourings happened. Right? And there were accounts of people preaching with children on their shoulders. Wow. Also preaching. Yes. Right? It's the place where they put hay and straw out because they knew that people were going to fall out under the power. People falling out is not a new phenomenon. No. no. I mean, it, history's filled with it, yeah. right? And, and so children have always been used by God. Amen. Matthew nineteen fourteen. Let's let's read that. Matthew nineteen fourteen. <clears throat> and the context of this is that people were bringing um, children for Jesus to lay hands on and bless. Wouldn't have been awesome for Jesus to lay hands on your child and your oh, grandchild. Yes. Guess what? He's still doing that. Amen. And the disciples tried to keep them from coming. Right? They sent them to play video games. <laughs> Can they go play video games? Because this is getting involved. This is distracting from us receiving what we need. Right? And what did Jesus say? Then some children were brought to him so that he would lay his hands on them and pray, and the disciples rebuked them. But Jesus said, Leave the children alone and do not forbid them to come to me, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. Amen. Amen. Don't hinder kids from moving with God. Right? Allow them to move. When one of the times when the glory cloud showed up at Bethel. Right? We, some of you have seen some of those videos. Yes. One of the times, because the glory cloud has showed up at Bethel several times. Yes. Right? Hallelujah. Uh, what, what Bill Johnson said, the glory cloud showed up. I had a friend who was there when it happened. He said, we were just in awe of what God was doing. He says, one of the experiences in my life that marked me forever, when the manifest presence of God showed up. Yes. Right? And Bill Johnson was like, you know, we didn't really know what to do. Because what do you do when the glory cloud shows up? And people did that, right? (laughs) Right? But you know what Bill Johnson said he did? He said, I started watching the kids to see what they were doing. And he said, you know what they were doing? They were worshiping. Because they've taught their kids to respond to the presence of God. Right? Do you know whenever somebody, they, they prophesy over kids in their nurseries and children's churches at Bethel, and they have files for those words that they hang on to? Amen. When you go to a leader's advance, 
They bring kids and put them on the, the, prophets, the prophetic teams for the leaders. Amen. Right? And usually the kids will uh, speak the most accurate words because they don't always have the religious bondage that we have. Yeah. Well, I can't hear God. I love the story where uh, one of the kids was like, they brought in a kid to prophesy, and he just nailed it. Boom, boom, boom. I mean, people were like, fear and tremble. And they're like, he said, well, my teacher just told me that I could do it. I believe him. Amen. Kids will pursue the Lord, right? Yes. If we if we introduce yes. them to those dynamics. When we lived in Japan, um, we would go to prophetic training, right? And uh, the prophetic training that Christian International does that Bishop Bill Hammond, uh, based there out of, I think it's Santa Rosa, Florida, and I would go to those prophetic trainings and I would come home and you know what I would do? I would gather my children and we would prophesy. Amen. And we would play prophetic games. <laughs> they were four and seven. And we would train them to do that. They're, and they're incredibly prophetic. Right? And some people are like, well... Is that for real? Are you just, should you play with the things of God? Yes. 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 We think it's cute when little kids dress up like cheerleaders well. or football players or astronauts or heaven forbid witches. Mm -hmm. Why don't we introduce them to the things of God? Amen. And they'll begin to move in the things of God from an early age. Yes. Right? Yes. So, also in the Christian school that I was in in Japan, I taught my Bible class to prophesy. All ages, Olivia was in there. And uh, the apostolic leader of our network that we were a part of came to minister one weekend. So, I, Gaius and JC, our leaders there, they were like, hey, go get your Bible class and have them prophesy to Ron. Amen. So, I called them in. They were terrified. <laughs> They're like... 10 to 14 years old. 10 to 14 years old. Uh, they prophesied um, that night when Ron was getting ready to minister. He said, I just wanted in the beginning to talk about how Olivia Rudd prophesied to me today. And she confirmed a major move in our ministry that we're making right now. And that was given to me to major CI prophets in our network. And Olivia Rudd just came in and prophesied the same thing to me. Amen. And Olivia, we had to pull her out because she passed out when we called her name. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? We trained her to do that. We made it her normal. That's good. Right? It was part of the culture that she grew up in. And whatever you make your kids normal, how many know you don't wait till they're 18 to do that? Yeah. Well, we're just going to put them in front of every occultic cartoon. Yeah. Yeah. They're going to know more about witchcraft than they do about God because yeah. of the popular culture. That's their normal. Or do you make the things of God and the presence of God their normal? That's so good. Again, it starts when they're young. I know Jamie's going to hit on some of these things, but you can't wait right. and say, well, I don't want to push anything on them. You do realize that everything's being pushed on your kids right now. Yeah. 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 Homosexuality and perversion is being pushed on your yeah. kids right now. Yeah. Gender confusion is being pushed on your kids right now. Right? And, and I and this is no longer a conspiracy. Yeah. Right. I, it's yeah. obvious. Yeah. It's obvious that it's happening. And no one is denying it right now. Yeah. And all those things that people 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago were like, this is happening, everybody's like, you're crazy. Mm -hmm. That's not going to happen. No, it's happening right now. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> One thing that... Um, our, our spiritual father, our mentor, Sam Matthews, would always say when we were there in Shawnee, he said, you know, first of all, they started a Christian school. 
because the Lord told Sam's wife, Kathy, he said, you can either train your two children or you can train a multitude. You can train a generation. The choice is yours. Well, it really wasn't because the Lord was like, I'm asking you to start this school and do this. And the Lord told Sam, he said, if you will teach your children to grow up in the presence of God and for the presence of God to become their normal from a young age, if they grow up in that, they'll never hunger for the things of the world. Amen. God's wanting to mark a generation with his presence. Right? Now, has all those kids, are they all revivalists? Probably not. Right? It's not enough. It's, it's not enough. Right? But we there there's this choice we have to make. Right? Because the world is desperate for a generation that know God. The world is desperate. And you know the old, the old John Wesley quote is truer now than ever. What one generation tolerates will become normal for the next. Right? There are things that are normal right now that are unbelievable. And I, you know, I hate, I don't want to be the guy that preaches against stuff. Right? But what we tolerated in the last generation has become so far beyond what the last generation thought would happen. And even stuff, and it sounds so religious, but even stuff like, well, church attendance isn't that important. Well, the next generation, where the, whose parents didn't think church attendance was a big deal, are now walking in ungodliness. Yeah. Because your values get communicated to your children, yes. Yes. even if you don't speak them. Yes. Yeah. What you live your life for, yes. That's good. what you spend your money on, yes. what you're willing to die for, yeah. how you live your life at home, Every day communicates your value to your children. Right? It's good or it's terrible. <laughs> Sometimes it's both, right? But our entire family is called to participate in the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. We are in an all hands on deck moment in the body of Christ. That's where we are right now. I mean, if God's going to do this thing, then we have to be full in. Because if we're not full in, then we're just going to raise up another generation. What happened in the book of Judges? Everyone did what was right in their own eyes. And the book of Judges starts off with that famous scripture that we all put on our refrigerators. As for me and my house will serve the Lord. Which is good until you realize that Joshua didn't raise anybody up to take his place. And it started a cycle of destruction in the nation. And it finally ends to the point that even the last, one of the last stories in the book of Judges is they were calling people to come and fight a battle. So they took a woman and cut her to pieces and sent her body parts to summon the tribes to war because everyone did what was right in their own eyes. Some of you are like, that's in the Bible. It is in the Bible. Now, obviously the Bible's not advocating for people to do that. <laughs> that's bad doctrine. <laughs> We're talking about doctrine before the service, right? Some of us, us theology students. And, but theology is so important because without theology... We've got whole movements in the body of Christ that are taking people to destruction. Yes. Yes. That's all we'll say about that. Yes. Jamie, I know there's some things that you want to say, so come on up. Right. Sorry. Anybody have a question? 
Yeah, there's so much to say, and you know, I'm one of those kick the sacred cow people, and um, he was like, don't kick too many cows this morning, I'm like, sorry, but you have to realize that we're not raising Americans. Yeah. Come on. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> you really said it. I really said it. I told you I was going to, because the thing is, you have to know, too, what the call is on your family, and I knew from a very... From the beginning, I didn't, I didn't choose to live. You, you heard how we became husband and wife. You heard all of those things. And it wasn't just to be like, oh, they, hey, that was fantastic. Now let's do whatever that we want, right? Because I live with such purpose. And so I knew our family and my children were going to be set apart for something very important so that we couldn't live as Americans live. We have to live as the kingdom of God. Yes. And that's not really great in our culture. Because our culture is pushing so many different things. And it didn't make me popular with my family or anything else because I didn't raise my kids the way everybody thought I should raise my kids. And I had very, very strong boundaries and expected certain things for my children. And I told Andy, I said, you know, sometimes you just don't know sometimes what that's going to look like. And I did a lot of things wrong and I was kind of more strict than I probably should be. But guess what? I know Mia hasn't been all the way through. She's only 15. But I'll put these two up next to anything. And it worked. Uh, no They're 22 and 25. Mia, don't let me down. <laughs> <laughs> so far, so good. Not that they're perfect. But you know what? From the time Olivia could walk, we went to church. It was our life. There was no other option. Taking a B day. That's not on Sunday morning. That just told my family that the Lord and our time together as family and corporate worship wasn't important. That was never me day, was never family day, was never when a service or a corporate time was there. Wow. Ever. And we worked nine to five jobs and all of those things. But that was never an option. And so by the, from the time we we had we were in a church where the worship time went at least an hour. Or we might not be saved yet. <laughs> telling you. At least an hour. And from the time she could walk, we had this discussion. Did you know that you can have discussions with one-year-olds? Yes. And they understand the boundaries, especially your wooden spoon. <laughs> it only takes once. Sometimes three times with him. But after that, <laughs> you just have that wooden spoon. That wooden spoon in your purse, you gotta pull it out a minute, like there you go. All right, sit, sit down. But from that moment, we began to cultivate worship in our home. Because you can go to church and expect, you know, fantastic, they're gonna worship and they're gonna teach my kids stuff. But you know what causes the greatest growth? What you do in your home. And that's where there can't be that double standard. I know you'll you'll hit on some of those things, but what's happening in your home? So we cultivated worship. Listen. We weren't perfect at it all. We had our fusses and fights and everything else too. But we were strict about what our kids put in through their eye gate, what they could see, what, what they would watch, what they would hear. Who would be, you know what the most important thing you can do is who gets to be a part of your children's life? Yes. Who do you let speak yes. into your child's life? Yeah. Who do you let speak into your life? What? I'm very picky. People want to be teachers here all the time, and I need them. Sometimes I don't have the money, and sometimes, what are you going to put in? What are you going to put in my kids? Yeah, I have to be able to trust that, and you only get to put those things in, so it's very, very important what you choose and who you choose to let, you know, put into your kids. And so we were cultivating that within our home. But when we would go to church, we had this understanding because I love corporate worship. It's my, it's my mood. It's what gets me through. I love to worship. And so, you know, I had this, she started walking at nine months or eight months. And so, you know, she began to worship at that point on a whole new level where she would dance and she would worship. And here was the deal. I told her, and we did this all the way through, all of it. We worship in this family. And I can't make you worship from your heart, but I will make you worship with respect. You're going to stand here. 
a whole hour. <laughs> and you're going to behave yourself. And the best thing you can do is have a good time in worship, but if you don't want to, fine, stand there. But you don't distract me from my worship time. Because you know what? At our church there, and it kind of is here too, after church they love to go run and play and have a good time. So as she got a little older, two, three years old, if you take from my time, I take from yours. So if I have to spend time correcting you and I don't get to be a part of worship and you're not just joining in with me and you're distracting other people from worship, then I'm going to take your time. It's very simple. They cultivated worshipers because you know what happened? By the time they were two or three years old, they didn't know there was an option other than to worship. Because it became part of who they were. Now, here we are. We got grandkids. We got all this. I mean, some of us, we already done this. And all like, wish i know known this. Wish i know known that. Do you know what I wish i know known the most is the dandy silk, keep your love on stuff. <laughs> hey, any little kids in here? Because I'm going to tell you all some tricks. And teachers, this works in the classroom. Why? Sometimes this works with your husband. <laughs> <laughs> I'm programmed. He's programmed. He's programmed. No, it's it's... Because everyone wants to be powerful, even a two-year-old. Yeah, especially. Especially a two-year-old. They want to feel like they have power over their lives. And you know what? It's okay for us to think that they look, they think they do. But do you know what creates a powerful person? One, they must obey, right? But two, they, they begin to, um, so for us, I learned this with me. I didn't learn this trick until Mia was, what, five or six? Oh, I wish I'd had this a long time ago. So it's time for bed. Anybody, oh, the fight's for bedtime. Oh, oh my goodness. So here's what we begin to do. Would you like to wear these pajamas or these pajamas? Okay, we, we got that battle done. It wasn't, I don't want to give it. No, that wasn't part of the choice. The choice is this or this. Would you like me to carry you to bed or you want to race? Do you want a drink of water before bed, or would you like me to bring you that drink in just a minute? And that's the end of that. Every once in a while, it's like, would you like me to spank you with this? <laughs> 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 with a bell for a <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. I know. Yeah. But I'm telling you, it changed everything. Do you want to wear this shirt or this shirt today? Yeah. You know, change everything. And I'm telling you, it works in the classroom. It works because we all want to be powerful people. Yes, yeah. And we don't want everybody telling us what to do. We want to be powerful people. Right? right? Okay, so off track. Okay. I lost our notes over here. Do you want to clean the house? Do you want to clean the house? <laughs> Would you like to clean the kitchen first or the bathroom first? You know? Right? Andy, would you? <laughs> would you like to mow the yard first or take the trash first? Any more options? No. We need more options. More options, please. What else you got? Yeah. Those are just the first options. <laughs> right. But you know, going back to not raising um, Americans, it is a hard thing in our culture. Because there is so much pressure, and um, I mean, even in our culture, we don't even eat dinner together. We don't. We we make that a very important thing. Even now, fifteen to twenty-two years old, and we still eat dinner every night together. There could be one night every two to three weeks that we don't, because we have friends now that we get to go to dinner with once in a great while. And it's like, okay, y'all got this, right? And then we eat dinner, together. and then they eat dinner together. Yeah, at the same time. At the same time. At the same yes. place. At the same place. And then, right? And it's, they sit down, they have dinner. And it's just a very wonderful connection time. And it's so important because it shows, you know what? It is important to us to be with you, even if it's just a little bit of time. And our American culture doesn't allow for that. Our American culture is pushing everything else other than the kingdom of God and the destiny and purpose on your life. Yeah. You know? From, I mean, I mean, I deal with it all the time in our school. Yeah, but our kid's not going to have a chance to be the next Tim Tebow. <coughs> yeah, right. Not a big 
Well, guess what? Tim Tebow would say, you don't do anything. But it's okay if that's what you're, you know, there is a way to have the kingdom of God put into your child and things of the world not become their God. Yes, amen. I have seen kids who are revival leaders whose parents decided because they had an agenda that their child was going to change the whole world through sports. And I'm not against sports. Okay? I'm not. Hear my heart. And they remove those kids from being leaders of revival and put them into a system where they didn't have that connection every day. Where they could do, and those children who are now young adults have been destroyed. Kids, is there redemption? Absolutely. And I cry out for it. I pray for them. I ask God to redeem it. I repent for any part that where I can stop and say, are you kidding me? Right. Don't do this. Because it's scary to say that to people. You know? But, but we have to have that. We have to not be afraid to say no to our kids. Say it again. We have to not be afraid to say no to our kids. Right. Yeah. Oh my goodness. The number of parents who are afraid of their children mm -hmm. yeah. astonishes me. Yeah. And I never really understood that. I, I have a little bit, I get older, I have a little bit of that more with Mia sometimes. And um, <laughs> I, I don't know out. why it's the age. I guess I'm old. I don't know. I'm tired. I don't know. But I, I never was afraid. And maybe it's just because I just didn't have enough sense to be afraid to say, <laughs> no. But my no meant no, they didn't ask again. Because if your no doesn't mean no, they keep asking and keep asking because they know your no isn't really real. Right. Yeah. So my kids didn't need to be a part of a lot of things. They didn't need to have a lot of friends. Because the Lord told me a long time ago, and especially with Mia, because you know, she's she is adopted. I know y'all know that because you know. <laughs> <She's> Japanese. <laughs> but, um, but there was a time about three or four years ago, and it was in the summertime, and I began to like start to feel guilt and shame. And I was like, oh Lord, I've kept her in this small private school, and she's so brilliant. And she's so shy, though, because maybe I kept her too close, and all of those things. And, and she could be doing and have all these opportunities if I if I put her into like a public school system where they have all of this funding for her to have all of these things. God show me what to do. And I mean he rebuked me so hard. Said <laughs> so I didn't give her to you to give her opportunities for her mind. I gave her to you to protect her heart. And I will bring the opportunities yeah. when it's time. Yeah. That totally settled me. Because if you know her, you know her. You know she's brilliant. There's a, it's like, I gave her to you, just like he's given me my other children, to train and protect their hearts and to keep them safe in the presence of God at all times. And that means at home, 90% more than, I mean, going to church, that's what? Step one. Are you kidding? My kids, they can feel like they're going to die and they're still going to show up for church because it's in them. Like, you know what? You don't have to if you feel that bad. Nope. <laughs> Go yeah. yeah. I gave birth four hours ago. I can be at church now. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes we put our foot down. <laughs> you know what? That's not a bad thing. No. People are like, look what you've done to your kids. Good. You know what? They never go after that other crap. Yeah. Do that. It's okay. Amen. Thanks. <laughs> I keep losing our notes. Okay. Um, so the scripture I'm actually supposed to talk about right now is Proverbs 22 6. I don't have to hurry. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. 
So here's your sacred cow kicking. Everyone uses this as their promise that their kids are going to come back to the Lord. And he should. It's a good promise. It's a good promise. But do you know the original meaning of this? If you train your child up, not just on Sunday morning, but every moment of your of your life in your house, they never depart from it. Right. It's not they depart from it and come back. Right. Now, some of us are in that place. That's our promise, and we got to hang on to it. Amen. Do that. Yeah. Absolutely. But what if they never Ooh. departed from it? That means you can't have roast pastor on Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon. Do you know what that means? Talking crap about me and Andy on Sunday afternoon. Or other people. Or other pastors. Or other ministers. Or other, or other people in the church. You have yes. to. <laughs> I need options here. We need options. <laughs> <laughs> that means you're not watching things that are inappropriate and then looking like hallelujah on Sunday. That means you're not out being drunk half the week and then sitting in church on Sunday like you're something. Am I against alcohol? No. But what you tolerate in this generation, the next will do in excess. Yeah. Sorry. So, hang on to your promise for your children to return. But give everything you've got to this generation now. Find a kid to love. Find a kid to pour into because you know what? We couldn't do it by ourselves. We had great grandparents. We had great people surrounding us who were giving to our kids all the time. But we didn't let them go anywhere. They didn't spend the night with other people. Ever? Never. Dina and I had this conversation. She asked me one time, what do you think about, was it Rayleigh going to spend the night with somebody? And I said, no, Dina, I am the wrong person. I am a crazy, crazy mama whose kid never spends the night anywhere other than a grandparent if it's necessary or for fun. Or if I have an emergency, I have two people outside of family they can stay with. Otherwise, it's not going to happen. And they're not spending the night at my house. Even the baby's Even the Very, very yeah. touchy. Yeah. yeah. Can't do it. <laughs> you know why? And Dina understands because of her line of work. She's like, you know what she needed? She had permission to say no. And I'm giving you all permission to say no. Yeah. Say no. Why? You know why kids don't come? Because you're like, well, they can come to my house because it's safe. It is not fair. It is not fair to my husband when some little punk teenage girl can come in and accuse him of anything and everything. It's not okay or it's not fair if I had sons for them to have to sleep in the next room with some other teenage girl in the other room. Not fair. Not smart. Very, very stupid. Say no. I can't let my kids go spend the night somewhere because I don't know that dad. I don't know if they have a brother. I don't. My gosh, you don't know what girls are going to do to girls these days. No. Yes, you can go to that birthday party, and I don't mind if I have to come at 11 o'clock and pick you up at night. We didn't do the slumber party. It's okay to say no. You know what? It's not just protecting you. It's not just protecting them. It's protecting everyone in your home. It is vital to make a good decision. Yeah. It is vital to think big. Yeah. So, back to train up a child the way it should go. Start young. You can't wait. You can't wait till they're 18 and think, oh, maybe they're going to get it together now. No, no, no. You should have already started. <laughs> and if you get it, repent now and start backing up. It's okay. Yeah. We've all screwed up. My kids need as much inner healing as your kids because of me. <laughs> <laughs> your kids might need it because of me too. I don't know. <laughs> it's okay. I tell my kids when they go in for some inner healing, you 
can tell everything it's okay I take it because you know what their healing is so important yeah and if you need to put it all on me okay because I'm, I'm certain it's not loser <laughs> So you've heard me teach them to prophesy. We teach them to hear the Lord. Do it, do it, do it. Um, Ephesians 6, 4. Bring them up with the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. We used to use this against my dad all the time. So you just pick up and You know, he just pick it up. Dad, the Bible says, don't provoke your children. Only to that. Always oh, right. We were close to wrath. <laughs> <laughs> he just picked us. We're like, Dad, the Bible says, don't, don't pick at us. Yeah. No, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. That doesn't mean just like for Sunday school, things like that. That's all the time. All the time. It's work. Do you want heartache in the end? Or do you want children who are worshiping? Because let me tell you something. Our children raised in the presence of God. I think we did a pretty decent job. We messed up here and there. But overall, good kids we've got. But do you know what? They still have hard crap to deal with in their life. Yeah. So people are always like, oh, you're just sheltering them. No, no, life will still happen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it just still keeps coming. They will still have to deal with things without me sticking them in, you know. Some system so that they can learn how it just blows my mind. I need to put my kid into that public school so that they can learn to be a light to the world. Are you freaking kidding me? You can't be a light to the world oh, <laughs> in that kind of system. Yeah. I mean, really? Yeah. I can't. Am I against public school? Well, yeah, but I'm not saying <laughs> do it if that's what you need to do. But you know what? We as adults have to have the presence of God constantly to be able to go into those systems. Yeah. And we need people who are in those systems who can help kids who have no other option and people who have no other paradigm. It is a ministry. Yes. It is a huge ministry. It's everywhere you are, wherever you work, it is a huge ministry and see that. But if you work with children, you know very well you may be the only person they see for the moment. God. You may be the only one. We have children who come to this school because parents want us to fix them, but they still want to live like hell. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And you know what? Okay. It's like, get them for a little bit of time. Mike, you get them for a little bit of time. You give them all you got. And you hope yes. that when it comes, we just buried a boy. I didn't bury him, but we just went to his funeral. For a kid who'd been here, and we so see, and we love him, and we love him, and we loved him, and we loved him, and he got killed on Tuesday morning or Monday, Monday night. But you know what? The last three months, the testimony is he gave his heart to the Lord. Why didn't I see it? Because I got to do the hard part. I got to do the hard part. We as parents get to do the hard part. We as teachers sometimes get to do the hard part. And we may not see the victory. But there was victory in the end for him. And for that, I'm so very thankful. So very angry. But I'm so very thankful. When you just want to knock somebody through the wall, give them everything you got. Love them. We weren't afraid to tell him no. And he loved the boundary, he hated the boundary. When my children have traveled and gone to both Brazil and India, Haiti, do you know what the phone calls would be when they when they call me from those places? I need a boundary. There are none here. It is total chaos. There are no boundaries. Because people love boundaries. Your children love boundaries. Your grandchildren love boundaries. You love boundaries. Whether you like it, you know it or not. Yeah. Set the boundaries. And it's safe there. I had to teach my kids how to set their own boundaries. 
because there are foundries everywhere. Are we going to be imitators? I kind of already did. Ephesians 5.1 says, Be imitators of God as beloved children. Again, Andy touched on this a little bit. But imitating the Lord, imitating the Lord they're going to imitate something. Nora imitates worshipers. She imitates dinosaurs. Every Sunday morning, she walks into her pop's office and says, Hulk, I'm ready. That means she wants to watch a video about the Hulk. And then she imitates the Hulk. Her parents aren't really excited about it. See, grandparents sometimes do things that we should. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes she's, she's going to imitate something, right? She's going to imitate something. So how about imitating the Lord? How about imitating worshipers? How about if they imitate you, They do. What part of it are they? <laughs> right? So it's okay. We want them to grow up to be whatever we want them to grow up to be. And that is the hard part is God, my agenda has to go. Whatever you want for them. Whatever you want for them, Lord. And that's a hard thing sometimes. Because we have great expectations. And I tell that to Mia all the time because we always talk about a million other things. I'm like, honey, you can be the doctor, you can be the lawyer. You can stay here and live forever if you want to. Okay. <laughs> you, can, you can be a hobo. I don't, whatever. <laughs> I'll support you, right? With some boundaries. Amen? Do you want to do that last part? I just wanted to plug in with uh, the verse here in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 6 through 9. Is it on? Can you hear it? Sorry. Maybe it's just me. Deuteronomy 6, and we've already touched on this. Um. It says, and these words which I am commanding you today shall be on your heart. And you shall teach them diligently to your sons, and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise up. Is that all the time? Yes. <laughs> it says, and you shall bind them as a sign on your hands, and they shall be as frontal on your forehead, and you shall write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gates. So that's every part of our lives we're to put into our kids. Yeah. Amen. We're to pour into them. And in our homes, in our lives, and we're to model to them what it looks like to follow God. Yeah. Right? And maybe your parents weren't super successful at that. Maybe they tried. Maybe you haven't been super successful at that. We haven't all been perfect. This is an opportunity, right? Because God wants to pour out his spirit on families. Yes. Amen. And this is a great moment that we can step into. And if you're here today and you're like, well, I don't have any kids. All right. You've got nephews. You've got nieces. Right? You've got people in your church. You've got kids that need to be trained. Right? You know, we make fun of that expression, it takes a village, but it really does. Right? It really does. And so God wants us, as families, as the family of God, to raise godly children. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Yeah. So I want to go back to the one thing I was going to say. This is the very, very beginning about teaching about um, one of the things that you have to do is teach thankfulness. And I want to give you all homework. Yes. Thankfulness is a huge thing. When we talked about love languages last week, 
And if that stirred you up, you're like, oh, my husband didn't do this, or my wife didn't do that, or she did. Okay, let me help you. <laughs> it's not even about you figuring out your love language. It's about you figuring out other people's love language. That's right. Because if you feed other love languages, your will be fed. So I want to give you an assignment, and I'm giving it to myself. And if you don't have a spouse or, you know, choose somebody in your life that you can bless this week. If you do have a spouse, that's your choice. <laughs> don't choose somebody else. <laughs> Start being thankful every day. Find something to be thankful that will feed their love language. You will be shocked how that will change you and your thought process and my love language isn't being met and how you will bless someone else. Because I'm telling you, if I feed his love language, mine gets fed. When a child's love language is, is touched, they do for you so much better. Just do that. So one thing, teach your children to be thankful. We play the thankful game at our school all the time. Yeah. And the most shocking thing to me is the kids that cannot, or the kids that could not be thankful for anything. Yeah. Is sad? Yeah. So, so sad. So thankful people will change the world. And they will be good humans. If we can't go for the kingdom, how about just good humans? <laughs> Teach them to be thankful. Mia never sits down to a meal that she doesn't thank me, either for cooking or buying it. it I, I don't know why. She just has always done that. Thank you for food. Thank you for the coffee. Thank you for... Yeah, thanks, Mom, for doing George. Oh, right now. <laughs> Create thankfulness in your in your in your kids. Do you know how you do that? You create thankfulness in your home. Yeah. Become thankful yeah. and say say thankful things. We used to sit at the table every night and tell what we were thankful for, yeah. or the best part of our day. We don't have to do that now. We just automatically do it. So, homework. Tell your spouse something that you're thankful for every day about them. But don't say, I'm thankful for, but I wish you would. <laughs> not the same, not the same. <laughs> okay. Amen. So let's just pray, guys. Father, I just want to thank you for all these people, for this family of God that we get to be a part of, and for your extended family in this city. And Lord, I thank you that Lord, you've called sons and daughters to prophesy. Father, you've called us all to know you from the youngest to the, to, the, to the oldest. And so, Father, I pray that our homes would just be filled with your glory. Our families would just be filled with your glory. Our marriages would be filled with your glory. And so, Father, I thank you, Lord, that we're, our homes are going to be just houses of your glory. And so, Father, thank you. Father, thank you that you give us practical tools to love one another. So, Father, we just really want to walk in that. So, thank you, Lord. Thank you for what you've been doing. Father, I thank you that revival looks like healthy marriages. Revival looks like strong families. And so, Lord, I just ask that you just do your work in us. And, Father, even where restoration needs to happen, where increase needs to happen, Lord, I just join my faith with all my brothers and sisters this morning, Lord, that there would be restoration, there would be breakthrough in every area, and Father, that you would even redeem the time and restore those things that the enemy has even tried to take, and Father, that you would just release a great grace in every household today. And Lord, we give you glory, we thank you, God, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right. Praise God. A lot of JVisms this morning. Yeah. Those are always good, right? So, bless you guys. Have a great day. Um, if you need further prayer, 
Um, if your ears haven't opened up yet, um, grab somebody and they'll pray for you. Yeah. Yeah. All right. God bless you guys. Have a great day.